Hello and welcome to this additional video about well creating a map and in the last session we talked about how to create a PDF map so an export using the map composer where you align your your elements on the map you print it out as a PDF SVG or as a simple TIFF or PNG so a graphic uh, but in this lesson today we will concentrate on how to publish a map on the web this might be covered in lesson 10 as well, but I think that is a quite an important step because sometimes you, or sometimes the the published PDF, well, it's a static map in the end, right? So you cannot zoom around, you cannot pan, you cannot query the data and so on. So that makes it a little bit harder for everyone to understand. But for QGIS, exporting a web map isn't such a difficult thing anymore because there's a cool plugin called QGIS to web. We will install it using the plugins manage install QGIS to web, not in the installed folder, but in not installed folder. Go there, just install the plugin. Take some time, so hold on, grab a coffee. So now the installation has finished and we will have a look at the plugin itself. Let's open up QGIS2 web. There it is. So there's an export option for open layers, leaflet and mapbox GLJS. I tend to use leaflet. I'm a big fan of it. I'm not uh, using open layers that often. So there's a warning regarding some base map services. Uh, let's go back to the plugin. And it offers you some layers and groups. So we see all the layers that are currently part of our project. We see an appearance tab where you can decide to add an abstract, add a search address search and so on. And but first let's deal with the question of what sort of data can I publish using QGIS to web? Take, in, take into account data streaming on the web takes memory in the browser so don't try to export a I don't know a point layer with 30,000 points that does not make so much sense um, or if you do so take care and uh, grab one more coffee to wait for the web page to be uh, to be shown on the web so we cannot export the current project especially if you are looking here on the roads and streets open attribute table it already takes some time on my on my Mac, and I well, that's a proper machine, right? And we have eighteen thousand entries here, and lots of attributes, and all those attributes normally will be published, and it contains no data, right? So why should I publish this on a web map? But for this example, we will take the point of view from a tourism guy, right? I'm oh, I, I own and I come some some um, places in Zwellendam. Let's have, let's have five apartments, and I would like to show my visitors and my my uh, guests where are shops in Zwellendam. So where can I buy things in a web map? So therefore, I will use the quick OSM tool. We have used this up front already, and let's go with key number shop. So we will query on all values and in around canvas extent should be fine so canvas extent means everything that is part of the current canvas so but first let's zoom out a little bit so we are sure that we will have everything from Swellendam inside the view open up QGIS to web again no not QGIS to web quick over them again once again we'll go with the shop all queries in the canvas extent open up the advanced section here and make sure to uncheck lines, multi line strings, and multi polygons because we are just interested in the point position of that. So run the query now. Does not take too much time. And there are the shops. Um, right click on it and make sure that the, the symbology is still a simple but meaningful. So 
I would like to publish a map just showing shops in Svelendam. Right? Click on OK. These are now all the shop locations of Svelendam. And I would like to show some labels for them. Right? So open up the properties, switch on labels, single labels. And we would like to visualize the name of the item. Let's go with a distance of three from the around point. Uh, names are now written in black. Let's switch off all the other layers because most of the important things are in the base map, right? Contains all the information I need. But the base map, well, I would like to concentrate on the shops. Therefore, I need a better a different base map. I don't need those fancy colors and stuff like that. So let's go to the um, Quick Map Services plugin. And you can see that there are already a lot of um, base maps enabled. If you aren't sure where are those coming from, go to Settings and make sure that you uh, click on More Services, Get Contributed Pack, then all the fancy base maps will be available for your use so let's open up this one and open up uh, open a new base map let's go with the positron no labels at all disable the osm standard now this looks like a good telling map right so there's just the roads and the names of the shops or maybe go with with labels car to the b uh, positron with labels switch it off again yeah now we can see okay there are some some street names makes it easier to find the shops right and this is our map so we would like to publish this map uh, therefore go with the qgis2 web now we only would like to export the shop and the positron base map right go with update preview and this is the current setup right if you zoom in you will see some other points here great you can also uh, see the labels of them but let's check the shop there are a lot of lot of attributes that are exported but um, this is not the way we should do this what we can think about is using a cluster approach update preview that means that features that are near to each other are clustered so you can easily differentiate okay yeah there's a hotspot there are about i don't know seven shops in there and here are six shops and so on so that's quite a good approach but let's have a look on the labels right or on the fields here there are a lot of fields and who who the heck uses fax anymore no one does and so most of those um, attributes are empty so let's have a look here on the shop the attribute table so you can see most of them are empty but just few of them hold some information and what we will use we will we will disable some of those attributes and we will only show the name and the shop so what is it right Double click on shop, go to the fields, no, the attribute form, I'm sorry, full ID, and we will set this to hit. We don't want to have the OSM ID, set this to hidden as well. OSM type, hidden, name and shop. We need these uh, entries, all the attributes are set to hidden. That means that they are not visible. To the user here in in the, the GIS, but it also means that they will not be exported. Or well, they will be exported, but they will not be visible to the user in pop-ups or whatsoever. So set them all to hidden. You can also delete them from the data set, of course. That's a harsh way to remove them, but for this example, we will all set them to hidden. Hidden as well. Hidden. Hidden. And last but not least, this one is also hidden. Just press on OK. 
and off you go. Now once again, open up Cubis to web, and now you can see there are only two items here, name and shop. So we will use an inline label and a header label. That's it. Let's click on one item. Now I can see name and shop. All right. We will use pop-ups and visibility. Let's go to the appearance section. I would like to have an address bar. I would like to have a expanded view here, but let's make this collapsed because there's not so much information on the map, right? So if you would like to click off, uh, click on and off the shops, you're fine. Then we have a geolocate function is always good for mobile devices, right? Uh, we don't want to highlight. We would like to have um, a name search for a shop. We would like to have a metric measure tool. Pop-ups on hover. We don't would like to have this full screen. Uh, we will restrict to the extent. Update the preview, and now we have here some tools where we can search for shop. Let's uh, look for SWD. Oh, it's not working. SVD tag. So this is a search function for the items here, and this is the address search. So what track street? And spell it up. And there is the water exchange and spell them. So this works quite fine for the moment. Let's have a look on the other items. Settings, preview and startup, that's fine for sure. Let's go with the export. The position should be not 15, uh, 15 decimals. That is a sub atomer level or something like that for the Geo position normally six or seven uh, decimal numbers for the geo for the location should be beneficial. We will use minified GeoJSON files and we will just select a folder where to publish the map. Go to QGIS training lessons, and there we go. We will store it there. Add abstract. Oh, it misses a title, right? It misses, okay. Now go to the project and the properties of the project. There's a general, and fill in project title, titles, fill in them, shops, person, okay. I hope this works now. This was not pre scripted. Update preview. Well, there it is, fill in them shops. So this is our map. We would like to export this now, right? So just click on export. Open up the finder or your explorer or whatever. Go to the exported session. There's the export folder. It is, it is ugly name, but it will work. Open up index HTML and there it is. Our Swellendam shops map we have exported. You can use this folder, place it on an FTP server or somewhere in the web and you can easily uh, play with the data inside right and uh, explore the explore your uh, custom web map right thank you very much for watching if you have any questions or comments just place them underneath the video i will try to answer them right away but stay tuned for the next lesson so we will catch up with lesson number six. Thanks again. Take care and goodbye.